The biggest reasons for developing a lack of motivation as we get older are certainly attributable to lifestyle factors, kids, life, etc. But there are metabolic effects that are affecting our brain at a neurochemical level, at a neurotransmitter level. And we're just now starting to scratch the surface of poor metabolism and insulin resistance and all these things and how it impacts the brain. Now, this isn't just going to be an informational video. I'm all about providing the information, the research, the data, but then giving very practical things that you can do. So we're gonna cover exactly what causes this and how to correct it. After today's video, I popped a link down below for House of Macadamia. If you like macadamia nuts, you've gotta check these guys out, okay? We're talking one of the most potent sources of monounsaturated fats that you can find. Monounsaturated fats are a tremendous fuel when it comes down for improving insulin sensitivity, not to mention they taste amazing and there's only a couple grams of carbs. So they're really the most buttery, like decadent nut that you're going to find and House of Macadamias does a tremendous job harvesting them in South Africa and in packaging them literally less than an hour's drive from where they're grown. So that link down below will save you 20% off plus get you a free cold pressed macadamia nut oil as well. So check them out down below. So dopamine is what allows us to receive a reward or feel a sense of reward. The uh, example that I always use is if you were to reach out and touch something, that anticipatory effect right before you touch something is dopamine. Okay, you don't recognize that you're getting a charge out of touching a door handle, but deep down that's happening, right? So when someone is depressed, they are lacking that dopamine a lot of times. So they can't get excitement out of anything. They just, they just don't feel like they're motivated. They can't get that, just they can't get lit up on anything. Well, there is a study that was published in the journal PNAS that was looking specifically at insulin resistance. And we are now understanding that insulin resistance plays such a huge role in our brain because we forget sometimes that our brain needs a bunch of glucose, right? It's a glucose hog. And if we're insulin resistant, that glucose can't get into the brain. So what they did in this study is they took mice and they knocked out an insulin receptor. What that means is in the brain, they made it so that the brain could not receive a signal from insulin, almost as if they were very insulin resistant. But when it was super knocked out, they found that the mice got very depressed, very anxious, and they ended up having high levels of oxidative stress and poor mitochondrial function. So clearly insulin is important in the brain. But what they started to realize is that there was an increase in what is called MAOA and MAOB activity. In simple English, what this means is they reduced the ability to clear old dopamine out of the brain. So without insulin, dopamine cannot turn over. So what happens is dopamine binds to a dopamine receptor and then it's cleared out, it's turned over and new dopamine is formed and you have new neurotransmitter formation. If you are unable to clear old dopamine and have no turnover, you reduce the amount of dopamine that you produce, which means much, much, much less motivation. So when insulin is present and able to do its job, it reduces the MAOA and MAOB. So if insulin can't get into the brain, you don't have the ability to clear out the dopamine and start over again. No wonder people are feeling depressed and anxious and can't have motivation. So yes, in addition to life, we can talk about behavioral changes and meditation and this and that until we're blue in the face. But if there's something metabolically wrong up here, you're gonna be, well, pissing up a rope, I guess is what they say. It's really difficult. Now, the other thing that ends up happening is you end up having this mitochondrial dysfunction. Okay, so the mitochondria end up starved of fuel. So they end up being very, very oxidative. So they end up producing more oxidative stress, which causes more inflammation in the brain. And this alone causes a problem, let alone it furthers the inability to deal with glucose. So when you're looking at this big picture, we have to understand what happens with the brain, right? So there's sort of a short-term thing that people can do. And then there's the long-term thing. In the short term, what people can do, and I don't wanna sound biased because I'm a low carb guy, but one of the strongest ways to improve brain function as far as metabolic dysfunction is concerned is a ketogenic diet. Now, I understand how people feel about that. That may not be the way you wanna go. I totally respect that. 
However, when you look at the neurodegenerative disease data, and when you look at the cognitive impairment and the cognitive performance data, and you look at network stability, and you look at the ability to improve literal brain function and communication of neurons, the ketogenic diet is very solid for that. Okay, for two reasons. For one, you are providing an alternative fuel source to the brain. So it doesn't need to use glucose as much. So what happens when that happens is the brain can run on this alternative fuel and it reduces the need for insulin, thereby increasing insulin sensitivity. So if you use a ketogenic formula as a means to sort of a, an intervention and then come back to eating carbohydrates later on, that's perfectly fine. Now, in addition to the ketones being an additional fuel, you're also reducing the amount of glucose that's having to go into the brain all the time. Not to mention, you have an anti-inflammatory effect of ketones that can blunt the inflammation that comes with the oxidative stress from dysfunctional mitochondria. So that's a very important thing there. So that might be the little intervention that you need, and that's pretty simple. Just eliminate carbohydrates and still eat a balanced diet otherwise. It's that simple. Now, lifestyle. You do want to improve your ability to utilize glucose. So you do need to practice training in a somewhat deprived state. Do some exercise in a low carb state or in a fasted state. Do these things because it's going to increase your body's affinity for glucose and it's going to increase GLUT4 expression, which means you're going to increase the number of nets that can cast into the bloodstream to capture glucose and bring it into a cell thereby improving metabolic function, improving insulin resistance. Increase the fiber in your diet for two reasons. One, fiber is going to increase the diversity of the gut bacteria, which has a very powerful link via the vagus nerve through the gut-brain axis. So that directly impacts neurotransmitter function in the brain as well. So if you're dealing with a lack of motivation as a result of poor neurotransmitter turnover, having a more stable gut microbiome might be a little intervention that helps you there too. So things like chia, things like flax, things like psyllium, a couple tablespoons of those a day go a very long way. Also things like green bananas or green banana flour, resistant starches, take rice, take potatoes, cook them and then cool them and then eat them in a cooled form. That is a resistant starch that can feed the gut and it's more than just having fiber and being able to poop. It's more about how it impacts the brain. And lastly, just a hot tip, have apple cider vinegar every time you have carbohydrates to try to reduce the impact. Maybe not every time, but maybe with your higher carbohydrate or your higher sugar meals. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.